everybody, I'm Dinosaur George and this is DGTV, our very first episode. Let me explain to you a little bit about what DGTV is going to be about. Basically, I'm taking the cameras out of the studio and out into the field to give you the opportunity to experience something that maybe you've never had a chance to experience. We'll go fossil hunting, we'll look for dinosaur tracks, I'll take you behind the scenes in museums. I'll have some really cool interviews with a lot of people who love paleontology as much as I do. So if there's an idea of something you'd love to see, please feel free to go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the DGTV page, and you'll see a contact us button, and that'll give you the opportunity to write to me and tell me what you'd like to see. Keep in mind, this is not some major production. I'm not gonna be able to fly all over the United States or the world for that matter. We're not gonna have incredible graphics. I won't have any explosions. I won't have any 3D animation. I just don't have the resources to do that. Now, if I can find a sucker, <clears throat> a sponsor who will be willing to sponsor it, then maybe you'll see some of those things happen. But for now, I hope you just sit back and enjoy these shows. And uh, I hope to hear from you as to what you'd like to see. This first episode is dedicated to how we prep replica skulls. I received six really cool replica dinosaur skulls and uh, they came fresh out of the mold so we had to prep them, clean them up, and then paint them to make them look authentic. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get going. Okay, to give you an idea of what we're dealing with, this first skull is a Utah Raptor and this is his uh, mandible, his lower jaw. And then next to him is an Albertosaurus, pretty big Cretaceous dinosaur. Uh, you find Albertosaurus from as far as uh, Canada all the way down into Texas. And the next one is my all-time favorite dinosaur in the world. That dinosaur right there is Allosaurus, who is my favorite. And of course, here's their mandibles lined up getting ready to be done. Uh, the little guy kind of hidden in between the, the Allosaurus and the one next to it, that is a Ceratosaurus. Absolutely one of the most terrifying looking dinosaurs you'll ever see. Uh, I think he'll really clean up nicely. Then that big honker there, that is Torvosaurus. Those teeth are gigantic. And then finally that monstrosity right back there, that is Sauraphaganax. Sauraphaganax is, a, is another really big dinosaur. So all of these guys, again, they need to be prepped, they need to be cleaned. Uh, you can see there's going to be a whole lot of work ahead of me. These really big guys have got a lot of prep work to be done. And then here is the mandible of the Torvosaurus. And then here is the mandible of the Sauraphaganax. And just to give you an idea of the amount of work that needs to be done, you can see inside of there when they pulled the mold away from the, uh, or when they pulled the piece away from the mold, uh, sometimes those pieces come off and all that needs to be repaired. Uh, I've got a lot of work to be done here where I have to fill that gap. I'll usually use putty to fill it and then we'll uh, go in and sand it and then ultimately paint these pieces. Here's the rear of the mandibles. Again, it's a lot of work to do. And then this is the lower jaw of the Torvosaurus. It still has a lot of stuff that needs to be done on it. All this stuff right here all has to be taken away. This is all excess that needs to be cut away. I'll probably use a razor blade to separate it from the... Uh, from the actual mandible itself. Uh, this one was stained in a dark brown, which makes it kind of tough because what that means is I cannot make the entire piece a light color. I'm going to have to stain the Torvosaurus skull dark simply because they chose to pour this uh, mandible in a dark color and that kind of limits what I can do. I may in fact have to make it a black skull, which is cool, but um, uh, I kind of hate those limitations. This is the top of the Sorophaganax, and you can see it really did not come out so good. I'm a little disappointed in it. I've got a tremendous amount of work I'm gonna have to do on that. I've got to fill all these gaps, which is a little frustrating. Um, uh, this tooth right here, you can see it's deformed. I'm gonna have to come in there and, and physically cut this down and bring it back into the shape of a tooth. Uh, lots of holes in this one, I'm not so not so happy about this particular one. A little disappointed, in fact, simply because of the amount of repair. But these skulls, the rest of these are absolutely great. Uh, here is the Torvosaurus. He doesn't need a lot of work. He's gonna need a little bit of touch up on these teeth before we paint him. Uh, quite a bit to do on some of these other guys, but it's all gonna be very relatively quick job, I think, because the quality of these molds are so good that it doesn't require a lot. I mean, you can see in this, um, uh, in this um, Albertosaurus that just spaces like right here, right between the teeth. I've just got to cut that stuff away. Um, 
I'll hold up this Utah Raptor because he's much smaller and easier to use. But uh, I have to trim around all of these spots around the orbit, around the anorbital fenestra. I have to trim that up, clean it up, and then ultimately paint the pieces. Then I've got to attach the lower jaws, but I've also got to put in the roof of the mouth, the palate. Uh, let me grab a palette and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the palette and excuse the lighting in here. It's, whoa, that's what happens when you step on bubble wrap. And let me tell you something, when you're working around fossils or replicas and you step on bubble wrap, I can absolutely assure you it scares the tar out of you. All right, so this is the interior of the Utah Raptor. And what I've got to do is I had to basically go in here and mount this inside. I've got to cut this down a little bit, kind of make it a little little straighter and then I'll have to come in here and glue this in so that it um, it basically puts the pallet in and then that then after that um, I simply uh, attach the jaws to the skull and we're good to go Well, there you go, 15 days worth of work condensed into a 10 minute video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have an idea for a future DGTV video, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com and click on the DGTV page and leave me your, your ideas. Let me know what you think. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourself and take care of the people around you. And for you young people out there, always practice your reading. I'm Dinosaur George and this is DGTV.